Let's get more from Jennifer Schuber, a demographic expert and author of Eight Billion and Counting. Jennifer, good to have you with us. So uh, Japan says it's on the brink of not being able to function as a society. Just how serious is the problem there? Well, there's no demographic trend that's inherently good or bad, but I think our question is, what is Japan willing to do to fix the problems that do arise from lower fertility and a shrinking population? And as we hear from the prime minister and in your report, there are some economic solutions on the table, uh, helping with childcare costs, for example, but what I don't hear are social solutions. And that's because that's a much harder part of this. So we've heard that other countries, uh, for example, China, we were talking about China last week, um, has also got a, a declining uh, population. Is this a demographic trend that is becoming more common? Absolutely. Absolutely. So worldwide, we're headed this way. And certainly we raise alarm about it because it's not what we have all experienced in our lifetimes to this point. But right now, two out of every three people on our planet live somewhere with below replacement fertility. That's below the number needed to just replace who's already born. China made the news for its depopulation, and we're talking about Japan today, but they are two of about 30 countries that are shrinking from an excess of deaths over births and actually shrinking overall, even when we include migration. So we are all headed this way, and I think that's why it's important for countries to start to figure out where they're willing to bend and make changes um, and where they're not. So immigration may be on the table in Japan, but so far it has not really been um, something that they have seen as a solution to their labor force issues. Yeah, Japan has been very reluctant to relax its immigration policies. Is that one solution though? And what are some other solutions? I mean, what can governments do to try and encourage people to, to have children, for example, changing social policies? And there are some things governments can do, and there are some things governments simply are not best positioned to do. So making sure child care is available and affordable, uh, that's something that can be done. Helping to make it easier for women who are generally an underutilized segment of the population to work in the workforce. Uh, those types of things can help. But what doesn't tend to help is throwing cash at the situation. Because as we all know, the reasons for having children are very complicated and, and just extra cash in your pocket is not necessarily the thing that'll work. I mean, one of the things that's unique about Japan and Korea as well is that very few births are out of wedlock. Just about two to 3% uh, births happen outside of wedlock. And so if we start to look deeper in society and understand that young women in particular and young people are not wanting to get married, then of course that will have a dampening effect on fertility as well. Interesting stuff. Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer Schuber there.